It's a high-tech conversation. And a low-tech topic. Live on the World Wide Web via Zoom. Bench Talk 101. Welcome, everybody, to this um, episode of uh, Bench Talk 101. Um, I have the uh, great pleasure of introducing our guest speaker, um, Ethan, uh, a.k.a. The, the Kilted Woodworker, tonight. Um, some of you know Ethan through his social media channels, um, others through um, his written skills, having been published in magazines such as Quercus, and, and some of you, well, um, you're his friends. Um, but uh, did any of you know that Ethan um, loves the superhero Wolverine from Marvel? <laughs> And that his hobbies range from hiking, barn restoration, leatherwork, and we can wonder what that leatherwork might be, um, volunteering in 19th century period woodworking uh, shop at the uh, Daniel Boone home, um, which is like a historic site in uh, Missouri in the, in the States. Um, and like most of us, uh, he loves his mum's cooking. He wanted, he wanted me to <laughs> put that one out for you, um, especially her homemade chili. I think she's maybe going to be watching this one later. No, it's my um, chili. My I, chili is better than hers. Oh, there we go. But uh, loves his mum's cooking. Um, there we are. Um, so, uh, and obviously, uh, his most important hobby is woodworking, um, which he embarked on back in uh, 2004, which is uh, some 17 years ago. Um, during the time that Shrenik was still wearing nappies. Um, but uh, Ethan's uh, first project was to make a carving mallet um, out of Osage Orange. Um, he says, learning to turn with Osage Orange is like learning how to drive a stick on a 64 Beetle. You learn on that, you can turn nearly anything. However, he still loves it um, and still has it today. He says he has better mallets, but he's, uh, it's the first thing he's ever made, so he's never going to get rid of it. Uh, and I think we can all recognize that trait uh, with all of our firsts, uh, whatever those firsts might be. Um, so Ethan's day job um, for the last six years is a senior user experience analyst for a software company. Sounds, uh, sounds technical. Um, and he's been with the company for, for 19 years. Um, but if he could have his dream job, um, he would be a regular contributor to a woodworking magazine. Wait a minute, that uh, sounds like he's already done that. Uh, his uh, dream job has been achieved already. Um, but so his next dream job um, would be to work as an R&D, so research and development, uh, for someone like Lee Nelson or, or Lee Valley, um, and help figure out what new tools that could be made, or more specifically, what old tools that are no longer being made could be revived. Um, sounds like a, a great job there. Yeah, um, so Ethan said that uh, if he had all the money in the world, he would make himself a, a bow child style, nine feet, nine to 10 feet long French oak Rubo work, workbench with bench crafted hard, hardware. Um, and I think, uh, I think that's maybe another uh, workbench there. So maybe he's done a lot of his stuff already. Um, but today we, the community of Bench Talk 101, have the pleasure of hearing Ethan talk to us about his cigar shaves. So guys, pour yourselves a bench beverage, sit back and enjoy Ethan. Thank you, Jeffrey. Appreciate it. Um, so, let's see how to uh, introduce the cigar shaves. Um, I guess for starters, uh, if anybody reads uh, Quercus magazine and you've made it all the way to the back of the last issue, uh, then you've seen my article um, that I wrote on uh, on the. Uh, Miller Falls uh, Cigar Spokeshave. So um, one of the nice things about writing for Quercus is that uh, Nick pretty much gives me free reign to write whatever whatever I want. Um, I mean, I throw some ideas at him and we talk about them, but uh, for the most part, I get to write about things that interest me. And uh, I'm one of those guys that, uh, that when I like pick up a thread of, uh, of something that, that's kind of interesting, and then I just start pulling on it until the, the sweater comes undone. And so I'll keep at it for a while. Um, like the first article that I wrote for Quercus was on um, a, uh, the, the depth stop for, for, a, um, for a chamfering bit, for a bracing bit. And uh, you know, it's, it's something that doesn't even have a, a number ID in the, the Stanley catalogs. Um, so that was a lot of fun to, to go diving into that. Um, but uh, so the reason I decided to write about 
the um, the Miller's Falls number one um, cigar shave is because um, well I picked mine up this is this is mine right here uh, I picked mine up about I've had it for about eight years now I guess and um, I bought it and brought it home and cleaned it up and I uh, looked at the blade for a little bit and and uh, kind of figured it out and sharpened it and put it back in and started using it and I never had any problems with it at all and um, I didn't think anything of it but over the years um, I would say the last eight years or so that I've been paying attention um, it seems like anytime I bring up my um, Miller Falls spoke shave the cigar um, the response is always or almost always yeah I have one of those uh, and I've tried to use it a couple times and it never works for me and so I chuck it back in the tool chest and uh, pull it out a couple of years later and I give it a try again and it, and it never seems to, to work right so um, I thought that maybe what I could do is use my platform at Quirkus to um, write a little bit about it and see if I can't uh, demystify some of it and make it so that um, for some of you guys at home that might have one of these, um, you could try to give it a tune-up and uh, and see if you can get it back to work. Because it really is one of the best um, spoke shaves that I've ever used. Uh, I don't know how many I have. I'm not a collector, so I only have about eight or nine, um, I think. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> so in preparation for this article, um, so I had mine, and my my idea, my brilliant idea, was to um, to buy another one, and then um, disassemble it and and clean it up, and reassemble it and sharpen the blade and and tune it, and then uh, you know document that whole process, and then. Uh, I would have something written for the article. Uh, and then when when that next one showed up, uh, this one right here. Um, so let me show you. Here we go. I need a pointer. If you can use a pointer, use a pointer. Bog oak. Um, so right, right there, that is the, um, that's basically the, the sole of the plane, if we treat this like a plane. And um, so this is, uh, it's about two inches long and um, a quarter of an inch uh, deep, I guess is what you would call it. So when I got this next one, and let's see if I can get the glare, and you can see there that it actually has another facet there. So the one of the previous owners of this uh, took a file and um, I guess opened up the mouth of the uh, of the tool. Well, I couldn't exactly disassemble this one and restore it and then explain to everybody how to do it because it's been modified. So then I had to buy another one. Um, that was a little a little more like the normal. So you can see there, there's the, the normal um, sole that it's supposed to have. And, um, and then also in uh, doing my research, which uh, was very extensive, um, cause like I said, I, I find that thread and I start pulling on it. And one thing, one little piece of thread that I pulled was from a, uh, it was a British woodworking forum. It was archived material. Um, but it was from about 2004 or 2003. So this is going back pretty far. And I was reading through, uh, somebody was discussing the, the Miller Falls, uh, number one spoke shave. And I found one, it was like a throwaway line, a throwaway sentence that somebody said, um, 
hey, you know, I I think that um, I th I think that Moore and Wright uh, had a version of this as well, and then nobody said anything about it, and and they just went on with their discussion. Um, well, of course, I started looking for a Moore and Wright um, cigar, spoke shave out of Sheffield, and. I was, I didn't know if I was going to show this to you guys um, tonight because, uh, because I, because it, I bought it from England. <laughs> I bought it from uh, eBay UK uh, and I kind of sneaked it out of there. Uh, so I apologize um, for that. But so this is, uh, and I don't know if you can, I don't know if cameras are good enough here. Yeah, you can start to see a little bit of the, the, uh, signature on there but uh, believe me it says more and right um so uh the miller falls uh spoke shave was was made from the late 19th century to about 1910 or so um and i believe the more and right one started around um, 1900 uh and went on to maybe about 1915 or so um but really none of them were made uh, past that so I'm not a collector, uh, and yet somehow I now have four, four of these spoke shapes. So I'm definitely going to get rid of a couple of them. At least one. I'm going to get rid of one of them, I think. Pretty sure. So um, I ended up now with enough that I can disassemble and um, fix a couple of them up and in the process learn more about them and how they work. And uh, yeah, that might have been Andy and Jim. Um, actually, it was. I don't think Jim was on there. I think it was. It was earlier than that. I'll have to try and dig it up again. Um, the problem with some of the rabbit holes I go down is that I, it's hard to repeat them. It's hard to 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 go back and 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 find that rabbit hole again. So. Um, Anyway, that was that was the onus for the article, um, and uh, how I uh, got to to where we are. So um, some of the problems, I guess, that's something we could talk about. Uh, some of the problems that I came across as we were um, as I was researching these and and. Uh, when I would get them and, and look at them. Um, one one problem, one common problem is that uh, the blade would be in backwards. So you'd have the cutting edge over here. Um, I'm not sure how anybody would ever get that to work, but um, so that was the, so that was the first, um, the first concern. Uh, the next one is that they just have it adjusted wrong. Um, and the third one, though, is the uh, the blade, and they have it sharpened incorrectly. So here's the blade, and let's see if I can capture that on here. See, there's a, a bevel right there on that blade. So the problem with that is. The blade for one of these tools is uh, you have to treat this like any other um, woodworking plane. Um, so it has a face and it has uh, a bevel side and edge. Um, and this, this right here is the the face of the plane or the flat of, of the plane blade. So this is supposed to be perfectly flat. This is like flattening the back of your of your plane iron. Um, so when somebody puts a bevel on it like that, um, it's like putting that big of a bevel on, on the back of your plane blade. So it's, you're going to struggle to get that to, to engage properly. Um, that's going to take some work to, to get that out of there. Um, so the, the bevel on the plane is actually on the, uh, the inside right there. And I don't know if you can 
see it in the light. It's, it is difficult to show. There it is. There. So it is just the tiniest little bevel there. Um, and honestly, I don't think the angle on that matters a whole lot. Uh, I've put it on there in a couple different ways. Um, it's not an easy thing to duplicate. Um, I think the idea, though, is to just get some of that edge there polished so that you you end up with um, uh, the, the two planes joining together at a, as fine an angle as you can get it, or as fine a point as you can get it. Um, so I think sharpening the blade is probably one of the most difficult things. And it's probably the one where people mess it up because they would put that bevel on there um, thinking that they're doing something right or improving on it or whatever. Um, but with each one of these that I tuned up, uh, I was able to get a, a nice, nice bevel on there. Nice bevel on there. And so um, I did a lot of work with the three of these just to uh, to see if I could figure out how to improve upon or how to describe a way of, of assembling it. And I think I'm going to try to come around here so that I can show you guys a little better. So you have your blade sharpened. and um, Yep, there you go. When you have your plane sharpened and um, put it here on the uh, on the body, and again, here's the the sole of the plane, and so we're going to put the. Basically, what we're doing is we're getting these two planes here, plane meaning the flatness, um, in line. So get it just about right there. Yeah, and then you want the opening there. You're going to see like a little black line there. The more narrow that line is, the tighter the opening is on this. So I'm wrapped around my bikes here. Um, so what I found was that that is basically the opening of the, the mouth of the plane. And um, we can get that really tight, really fine, and we can produce nice fine shavings. So there you can see that that is uh, fairly fine. It's about as fine as I can get it adjusted by hand. And then if we go to the next one, and you can see there. <clears throat> so it's easy to tell if you know what to look for. We're looking for um, the flat of this space right here. And so that opening right there, a little bit wider on this one. And then when we get to the one that was modified, um, you can see that. So. Here's the flat, and there's the flat. So that opening is is much wider. You can, in fact, you can see you can see me through it there, um, because that's so wide of an opening. Uh, in fact, I was able to take a measured sixteenth um, of an inch uh, shaving off of this um, this largest opening, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, and it was a clean shaving, nice and sharp, clean shaving. Um, the other thing that that uh, I believe I was able to um, to figure out a reason for it. So um, I also, when I refinished these, I, I repainted the inside of the. I guess it's the throat of the of the spoke shave, uh, red that Miller Falls uh, red. Uh, I don't know if you guys can put the capture it here on, and, and it won't. But so that edge right there on the inside, that that ninety degree turn in there, is is painted red. Um, and I can see it in person, and you can't see it on 
on the camera. But um, I was wondering if maybe that was one of the reasons why they had that painted is so that when you're setting this up, um, the way I was looking for uh, adjusting the, the opening on here was by the amount of red that I could see. And if I set it up so I could barely see any red at all or almost no red, um, that is the, the tightest mouth that I can achieve. Um, or when I open it up and I can see a bit more red, um, then that's the, the wider of the mouth that I can achieve. Um, and so uh, all of that is documented though in, in the article that I wrote. Um, if you have one of these and you have not been able to get it to work properly, I would highly recommend getting the issue five of Quirkus Magazine so that you can um, kind of read through that and and try to, uh, hopefully though I was, I was able to, to show you a visual of, of what I was talking about in the article. It's a little bit harder to describe pictures with, with words, but um, I think I did a pretty good job. So uh, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about was the tuning up uh, these for use in the shop. Um, the topic that I really wanted to go into, um, but A, I didn't have enough information, and B, uh, I didn't have enough <clears throat> page uh, space, is a, uh, is a type study to see how many different versions there are of this um, tool. So the, oh, and I can't remember his, name there is a uh, a spokeshave book that uh, came out is his last name larson lawson i'm sure somebody's going to know it um but it is a it's a thick book it's about this big on um spokeshaves and he has this in there um but he only has uh yeah that's it lamont yeah um he he has a, uh, it's just a couple paragraphs on the Miller's Falls number one cigar shave. And he says that there's really only about two types. And the main difference is, so this is an earlier version. And in the, the, the metal part of the body, um, there's a little groove in there. This is a later version. Uh, and there's no groove in there. And he said, that's really one of the one of the main differences. Well, um, maybe not though, because uh, for starters, I'll take the handle off of this one. It has a really long post. Uh, I believe these are all original. I haven't seen anything to indicate otherwise. So uh, on this first one here, um, the the post is threaded and it's um, attached to the body. And honestly, that, that doesn't make it as useful as it could be because if you're taking the, the arm off to get into a tighter space, well, I, I'm not getting, I'm, I'm only getting this much extra space because I still have the post there, right? Um, so I believe this is the earliest uh, type. And when I get to the one that was heavily modified, uh, we had the same thing. Which, when you can duplicate something like that, then that that tells me that um, that yes, I'm looking at the original design of of how it was. It's not something that was modified. Um, when we look at the newer one, though, uh, we see that that they made a change. That the the threaded rod is is on the handle, not on the body. So now, when when I do need to get into a tighter space with this, I actually can, um, because when I remove the, the arm, I'm actually removing that much of the uh, of the, the tool so that I can get into a tighter space. And so yeah, technically, I guess you could remove both of these arms and 
it would have this tiny little tool that would be a little bit more difficult to use. Um, so there's a, a different threading issue there. Um, if we again look at my original and then the one that was heavily modified, you can see that there's some minor differences there in the, the length of the body. Um, if we look at the, the different handles, there's, there's different uh, shapes to the handles. I keep wanting to pull up the, uh, the more and right one, which is obviously going to be different, not the same type. Um, and then there's one other thing that came up, and this is something that um, I actually had a couple uh, woodworkers who, who messaged me about this. And that is that if we look at this, we have the, the two <coughs> screws that hold the, the blade in place. By the way, these screws are uh, quarter, uh, quarter by 28 um, fine machine screws. Um, and they have, uh, it's kind of a, an oval head. with, you can see the, yeah, kind of an angle there. And that's what captures the blade. Um, and I have, uh, I believe I have pretty good uh, Google foo. I can, I can find things online. Uh, I cannot find um, half inch, uh, quarter by 28, uh, oval headed, slotted um, screws. So uh, I have actually I was <laughs> I was checking the door earlier because it's supposed to arrive today. I do have from uh, McMaster Car. They have some uh, just some some flat top, and I was going to see how how much space I had there if I could um, do a little bit of doming on it to to give it the oval shape and still make it a, a replacement for these. So that is something I'm going to um, play around with a little bit, but. Uh, the thing that I'm going to show you on this one is, so here's the the two um, screw holes that we have, the same as on this one here. And if we rotate it a little bit more, there's two more. And I really honestly haven't been able to figure out what these are for. Um, I don't know if it's, well, so on this one, what I thought was the case was so here's the the normal sole and the flat of the blade we rotate it and look at that there's another sole here on this side so what i was doing playing around with this one i figured out that if i flip the the blade around and move the screws to the other holes that um I had a different opening here than than on the first one. Um, so the first one has uh, the sole is again two inches by a quarter of an inch. Uh, the sole on the other side was two inches by uh, an eighth of an inch. So it was giving you a little bit more of an opening. So if you wanted to do um, some rougher work, flip it around, move the screws, and and this one tool provided both things. Um, but as I was examining it more closely, um, I don't know if we can capture that on here. Uh, you can see that there's some machining marks, I think probably from a file um, over here on this side. Uh, it's not straight. It's not straight in line with, this is hard to do with a camera in reverse. It's not straight in line with um, the main opening. Uh, I believe somebody filed that in afterwards um, because I've seen other examples with the four screw holes that don't have that flat on there. So it's gonna take some extra work, I think, to try and figure that out. I, I don't know what the reason was for it, but um, I think that um, the woodworking community in general might benefit from uh, an actual type study of, uh, of this. And so that's something that I was gonna work on doing. Um, but, just picking up an extra three of these spoke shaves was um, was a bit costly, and I don't know how many I'd have to buy to to do a proper type study. I suspect I'd have to get upwards of uh, 
you know, 20 or 25 to get a good sample of uh, the information. And I don't have that kind of money. So um, what I was thinking that I might do is um, offer some type of, a, I say offer, but really I mean, um, you know, it's a paid service. So um, where if you have one of these uh, spokeshaves and you've tried it a couple times to get it to work, and even after reading, even after reading my article, you still can't get it to work. Um, we can figure something out where you ship it to me and I'll get it tuned up. And if you want, we can do a full restoration on it, um, polish the steel and give it that nice red, uh, clean up the handles a little bit more and uh, sharpen up the blade and get it into a good usable condition. And while I have your spoke shave here with me, I can disassemble it and document it and record that information um, for, for a type study. And then if we get enough of those, then I can help fund more of my woodworking, which is always good. And um, you get a usable tool. And then I also get information for my type study. So uh, that's something that I, I will probably post a little bit more information about that. Um, Instagram obviously is my uh, social media of choice lately. Uh, I have a blog and Instagram is so easy that, um, that I neglect my blog. Um, and I, I, I shouldn't do that because I like to write. And I love typing more than typing with two thumbs. Um, so that's one thing that sucks about Instagram. So anyway, um, I think that's about all that I wanted to cover tonight. Uh, I could go on for a while, I think, but I, I don't. I don't want to, um, unless you guys want me to. No, I, I shouldn't. Um, but uh, I think I touched on a couple of the things. So two of the things that I wanted to discuss was the type study and the, the how I wanted to go about trying to do that. Um, those are things that I couldn't go into in the article. Um, so again, if you haven't yet purchased it or picked it up, then what I would highly recommend is getting that uh, Quirkus issue five. Um, and not just because it's filled with great articles by great writers, um, but because there's some information in there for uh, for the Millage Falls uh, number one spoke shave. And uh, what I'd like to see is is a lot more people putting it to use in their workshops. Um, it was really uh, it was really amazing to me to how many times I heard, you know, I could say probably 20 times over over the last eight or nine years that I've had somebody uh, say to me, oh, yeah, I have one of those and I have, I can't figure out how to get it to work. Um, you know, it was enough people that I thought I needed to figure out how to do something about this because, I mean, I got mine working pretty easily. Um, so I don't know if uh, there's anything else that you guys want me to discuss. If you want me to, to I with just a little bit of motion here, whoops, hold on. There's nothing wrong on your side. I no, you okay? <laughs> no, I'm good. No, there's nothing wrong on your side. I uh, flipped. I flipped my my screen <clears throat> to a different window. Um, Would you like us to go to questions, Ethan? And then we can. Well, I was going to say yes, I can. Um, I can also with a little bit of movement here. Uh, where's my? We can get a my, bit of a demo, uh, can we? There we are. Yeah, my vice is right here. Whoa. <laughs> My headphones are around the vice. Um, so my vice is right there. And um, I love, I mean, if you don't have a benchcraft advice and if you've never tried a benchcraft advice, I mean, look at this. You know, I, that is just unreal. Anyway, here's the the one that's wide open. I mean, that's a shaving, you know, that is, and how much effort did I put into that? Nothing. And oops, <laughs> pop the blade out. Um, but uh, might be took a little too much, but that was, um, and it's really not that difficult to put it back in. 
you do have to use a Miller's Falls screwdriver when you're working with Miller's Falls tools. So again, um, what I'm doing is when I'm lining this up is I'm looking straight down onto the sole and then also straight down onto the, and by light reflection, I can tell when they're in the same plane. Uh, and that tells me when I have a good setting there. I'll tighten this one down a little bit more this time. So if you're doing table legs and you're trying to plane down some, uh, and look, this is, and look how smooth that is. Can you see how smooth that is? Can you feel that? I can feel it. It's smooth. It's smooth. Um, and we go from that to, let's go to mine, which has the fine settings on it. And um, I can do finer because I have mine is set where um, I can do a heavier cut over here and a finer cut over there. Um, so, you know, that's a huge difference there. Um, but I hope that shows you guys just a little bit of how great this tool is. And you could probably whittle away all day long, couldn't you? I mean, I could. Yeah, <laughs> looks uh, looks looks rather nice. Uh, so uh, sh let, let's go into a few questions, um, uh, Ethan. Thank you very much for for your talk, sure. and, uh, showing us uh, you know the differences between the models of uh, the metaphors that you've got there. Um, I noticed the wood. Um, is, is the wood um, uh, is it a rosewood or is it an ebony or? Uh, it's rosewood on the uh, Millers Falls. I don't know. Um, I'm thinking almost a mahogany on the on the more and right. Hmm. I, I don't know, I'll have to clean it up and look at it a little more carefully, but it's, it's definitely um, different yeah. than the, yeah. But yes, this is a rosewood on the on the Millage Falls. Lovely. Right, so first yeah. question is going up to Mitch. Have I allowed Mitch to unmute himself? Yes. Mitch, are you there? Good question, Mitch. Um, so what I say, it, sorry, he didn't really ask a question. <laughs> I thought maybe it was my internet playing up and I thought, oh, what's going on oh, here? No, so, Mitch, sorry. Mitch, darling, no. can you hear us, Mitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we had this a couple of weeks ago where he um, he went oh, on. not again. Oh, no, you're on, you're on, you're in. I'm nope. Okay. Yep. I hear you. Hi, Ethan, good to speak to you again. Yeah. How are you keeping? doing pretty good how are you doing sir yeah good thank you that was a, an excellent talk i really enjoyed that thank you thank uh, you and i bet uh, all the auction sites are going to be buzzing with people trying to buy those. that was my other concern with doing something <laughs> like this i should have tried to buy a couple more <laughs> before i did that <laughs> uh, well i'm certainly going to be looking out for one and uh, i'll be coming back to this video to help me tune it up so okay I really appreciate what you shared there and sure. of course picking up quirkers uh, I was just wondering about the, the the real origin of this tool and whether you could take it back uh, to beyond Miller's Falls bringing out one. Is there anything that you've heard of? Um, I haven't. Um, so in my research, the only four, the only four designs of this that, that I could find were the Miller's Falls, the Moore and Wright. Um, I don't have one, but um, there was a, a guy and I guess it was about, he started in the maybe 2005 or 2006 or so. And he, I think he stopped in about 2016 uh, and it was called um, 
uh, Kelly Toolworks. And every now and then you'll find a couple of them show up. Uh, he made a couple different tools, but every now and then one of his um, one of his uh, cigar shades will show up on eBay, and man, they go for. Uh, there was one on a couple of weeks ago, and it, I think the final price on it was uh, two thirty five or uh, two forty five, something like that. So, I mean, that was you know. A good four times what what I normally pay for for one of these uh, Miller Falls versions, um, and then there is um, a fourth uh, tool out there that um, I would say it's confirmed. I've been trying to get a hold of them. They're they're notoriously difficult to get a hold of. Um, if you if you spend a lot of time on eBay like I do, um, you know that there's a company out there called the St. James Bay Tool Company. And um, it's an American company, I believe they're out of Utah, um, that provides, they do like small batch runs of copies of other planes. Um, so right now, and they sell on eBay. Um, so right now they'll have like um, 10 um, bronze um, little mini router planes. Um, and they sometimes they'll sell them rough cast so where you clean it up and sometimes they'll sell them uh already cleaned up and polished and uh it comes with the the screw that you need and it's already tapped or it comes without it and it's not tapped and you can do it and so the they offer different prices and um you know it gives people who are starting to try to get into tool making um, the opportunity to to do it in smaller steps, um, but they also even sell kits for for making uh, dovetailed um, infill planes. Um, but uh, on their website, they have a, a listing there for uh, a copy of the Miller Falls Number One spoke shave. Um, so I've never seen it for sale on eBay. So I was going to try to get a hold of them and find out if if they if they still had some or if they um, ever do a run of them. And I tried calling the phone numbers on the website and they were both out of use. Um, so I messaged them on eBay and he got back to me and said that there is a um, an email type form on their website that works. And so uh, after I get done with this tonight, I'm going to send them a message and find out because they also offered the blades for these. Um, and that is one of the hardest things to find. Um, so on the three that I have, don't know how easily I can show this, but I'll try. Um, well, this blade is is um, about half of, of what is left of, of these two. So and this is the guy that, that opened the mouth up on this. Um, he used the crap out of this uh, because he has sharpened down half of, of, this, of this blade. Um, I just think that's amazing. Um, and in fact, he also uh, used it so much that the, yeah, it's upside down. The, uh, the patent information, which is right there is almost completely worn away on this. So he really used this this tool a lot. Um, I'm always interested in, in trying to figure out what that person was or what they did. Uh, and I always want to think a chair maker um, because of the tool. But anyway, um, finding the blade is, is very difficult. I believe that's probably one of the reasons why that um, or that Kelly Toolworks one went for such a high price is because it had a spare blade with it. And so with that, you can get on eBay and every now and then you'll find um, just the body um, with no blade uh, for sale. And and that's practically useless because where are you going to get a blade for it? So yeah. if you can get it from, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to contact uh, St. James Bay Tool Company and see if they have a number of the blades. And if they do, then I will acquire them. And that can be a part of uh, the restoration that I offer is, is a new blade. Fantastic. Well, yeah. Thanks again, Ethan. I'll pass thanks. on to the next question. Cheers. All right. Thanks, Mitch. Lovely. Good.
Paul, up you're next. You're up next. Hi, Ethan. Thanks for the talk. Sure, Paul. Uh, just a quick one. You know that you were talking about using it without the handles? Mm-hmm. I wondered whether you'd thought about putting, making some handles which went at sort of like 45 degrees, you know, a bit like a draw knife handle to actually screw into the sides. Huh. You know, that might be easier to do with, um, with one of these where it's in the body. Right. Because well, I was Cause... thinking you could literally, on the other one, where it, where it was in the actual handles, Yeah. just make some little handles, and then you could have a screw coming in sideways. Well, that's true. You could do that, too. Um, I, I guess the only thing with that is that when you you want to set them both in the body first before you glue the handle on, because you want to be able to, to get it set up um, so that they're facing the same way. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I never thought about that. No, also, though, um, I have, I don't know where it is right now. I mean, I do have uh, a fairly small draw knife already. Um, oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Whose is that? Um, it, it's Ethan's. It's mine. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember. This is not marked. I, I think that's a, used to be available from Lee Valley. Uh, I'm it is to marked. Say it's like a crap. French oh, it's company. Pexto. No, this is Pexto. Oh. Hmm. Really, Pexto actually made a useful tool. Wow. If you can see that right. These things are really horrible for trying to get a close up of that. Take my word on it. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's a pex show. You can, uh, I see these everywhere in, in the States um, at tool auctions. So I don't know, I'd never thought about doing that just because I already have a small um, draw knife. Sure. But um, that's, that's, it's an interesting idea. Something to think about. Cool. Okay, well, thank you anyway. Sure. Thanks, Paul. Jim, over to you. Oh, boy. Hey, hey, Ethan. How are you, mate? Oh, hey, Jim. How's it going? Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, I've got a million, haven't I? I mean, I must, I must, I can't even see you. I, I've got Jeffrey. Why have I got Jeffrey? Has he pinned himself? No? I don't know. I've got, I'm spotlighted now. You're uh, spotlighted. Yeah, I, I, you're I've, asking I've, the question. I've got a couple of things. Right. First of all, for you. Uh, the original was Goodell, uh, who worked at Miller's Falls. Albert Gibble, Giddle, Goddle. Goodle. Goodle. Yeah. And he, um, his patent number, if you want to write it down, uh, is 293651. So it's the US patent. And you can get it from the patent office. And it actually shows this one as the original. But I oh. don't know. Maybe that's a speculation, but I haven't got the paint because I just went and started uh, playing with it when I got mine. If you remember back, we, you mentioned the UK W forum, Andy and I were talking yeah. about it. Because again, in the UK, people had these, and these are very rare in the UK because obviously it's an American tool originally. Even yeah. though your more and right uh, might might be interesting to research how. Uh, and when that was made, because it's yeah. definitely a copy. I would have thought it was a copy. And Andy's put the patent up on the screen there for us. But um, yeah, so uh, just um, just going about your uh, talking about your uh, concept of um, taking them in and restoring them. Yeah. Um, and and I really do a reflection here on what I uh, do with when people ask me the same about uh, infill planes. Uh, there are some key things that 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 I believe um, if you're going to go for a, originality or, or fineness, if you like, like you were talking about your fine one. Uh, this one, incidentally, has a Kelly blade on it, blade on it. Yeah. which I think was about 80 quid landed to the UK. So but as as you pointed out, um, 
it it has the um, perfect face to it. Yeah. There, there you go. Let me see whether I can tilt that slowly. There you go. Um, and if there's a back bevel on that, you yes. know as well as I do how much work you've got to have to flatten the whole thing. Yeah. And that's like saying to somebody, you get an infill plane with a blade in it, iron in it, and you've got to flatten the whole back because that's what you have to do to get that that back to to a cutting edge. Um, right. So that's point one. So that's why when my what one I bought on eBay arrived, it had exactly the same bevel as yours. That the, the the bad one of yours. I mean, like an eighth of an inch bevel. Yeah. Well, no, this one was way back, halfway across, and completely twenty degrees. You know, wow. so it was, and it was no way that that. So when I found out you you could buy these, and we were very lucky, we got two of them. Me and Toby got two of them. He he imported it, and we split the cost of it. But even then, it was expensive. Um, so that was that. But with with your one that the sole plate here mm -hmm. uh has been beveled as well mm -hmm. i think that's a write-off unless you're going to go for you know like you said ch chair making and you're going to cut big shavings because there's yeah. no way you can't flatten that no. anymore because if no. you flatten it you reduce its height relative to the cutting edges the rotating edge so that that was the point there but i actually think that this part uh the body here is eminently copyable. It's it's simply just a piece of steel bar. Full steel yeah. bar would be fine. And you know anybody with the minor milling capabilities could mill a mouth of those angles and cut two holes. That that's all really what it is. It, it, but as you said, it's the it's the actual cutter that's an issue. And I looked into that back in 2016 and. Um, I didn't realize James company was was doing it, um, but it really is just a tube, a tube of tall steel. Yeah. And then you take the tube, cut it to length. the thirds, I think. Probably. And, and then you cut a piece out of it and you put a bevel on it and so on and so forth. I think it's feasible if you have potentially if you have, you know, um, complex yeah. milling or CNC equipment. Yeah. So I think that's the route to go. But I, I think these are like rocking horse poo right now. And that's the, the critical bit, as you say. Um, there was another thing I was going to mention to you, um, and I've completely forgotten it. But uh, yeah, so the good old patents there, it's actually written on the, the thing here, established 1884, which is on the patent here. Um, and it looks like it went on till about 1910, at which point yes. I think most people said, I have no idea what to do with it. And that, that they haven't, you know, it went out of fashion, really. So I don't know if any of that has any help to you. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting to, to look up that, that good old patent information. Um, what is your, the one that you're holding there? Is that a good old or is that Miller's Falls? It, it's a Miller's Falls, but they're all okay. Miller's Falls. A good old work for Miller's yeah, Falls? Yeah, he worked for Miller's Falls before yes. he did good old prep. Yeah, so they put, they put his, uh, the reason why I think this is original, it's got the original patent number on it. Mm -hmm. um so, and it actually matches the picture i've got of the actual excerpt from the pay, patent with the price and everything um but later so yours on, has the patent number on it? it it's got it like yours it's rubbed at that point uh it's got the remnants of the patent number and i i believe it's the end of the patent number but it's it's so tiny uh it's so tiny and uh so rubbed and I, I hadn't actually bothered to look at that sort of detail until you mentioned it. But um, uh, this one is actually fairly legible. Two one nine, two two say no. Two nine three nine, six three. nine one. Um, yeah, so mine's not showing that. Mine shows the patent date. Eighteen eighty four. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I mean. Clearly, the original patent here, which is drawing from original patent, shows the short stump screw, that one. Yeah. Um, which is the one with the screws in the handle. And it also shows the two ridges on the, on the handle itself, which I don't think the one you had with the screw in the body has ridges on Correct. the handle, has it? Yeah? No, uh, no it's ridges on the, on the body. 
So which one is that? That's the this right. Is... What's that? Okay, so this one, which is the same as yours, that one. Except this is the one that has four holes. Yeah, mine only has two holes. Um, and, this... and this is this is also something that I've seen on on many uh, for sale on eBay is the four holes, and so I know that that's not just something that one one person did. Okay, I, I can't see four Unless holes on of any of the ones on here on the patent information. No, but it does say early. And actually, one of the early ones, it's it, there are no ridges on the handle, so it looks like there could be quite a few permutation. Yeah. Um, so, like you said, research really needed. Oh, and also, um, here, you can say, um, Andy, do you have yours as well? If you, I've got all three of you on spotlight. So, <laughs> Andy Brown, if you put yours up as well, which one? Uh, you, you just quoted that you've got on yours. You've got the um, yours shows the date. Yeah, I, I was gonna say mine just has on one of these just has the date. It doesn't say, and then one of them says, um, "MF Co. Miller's Falls, Massachusetts," and then it has the date. So yeah. there's, I mean, just right here we have three versions. It's, it says patent February 19, eighteen eighty four. Yeah, right. This one doesn't think, have February on it. I think yours is is it definitely because my half my February in eighteen eighty four is missing. Yeah, the that's the trouble, you see, as, as Ethan said earlier on. Oh, yeah, February 19, 80, 1884. Yep, it does, yeah. The top half Is the top half missing, Jim? What top half? No, top half um, some of them only have the patent date, and it doesn't say the... It doesn't have Miller's Falls on it. Um, this mine, one... Mine is worn where Ethan said his was worn, where, because it's next to the mouth here, yeah. right... When yep. you when you do the action like that, it roll. I I've learned to sort of almost roll with it, uh, especially if you're doing curve work. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, that's the point I was going to make uh, that you didn't uh, touch upon. What it's good uh, to if, use for? If you want to do an inner curve, there is no spoke shave apart from this one that will do that. No. Yeah. Sean, Sean if right. you put yours back up again, Sean, Sean can show the date on it very clearly. Oh, wow. so I, wasn't actually, I actually took a photograph on my phone and then blew it up. And if I can get this close enough to the screen, at the right angle for you guys. Oh, yours, oh, is, good yours, is, yours is very posh. Yours is, yours is unworn, isn't it? It's, uh, it's in pretty good shape. That's the actual shape there. But it says, um, I'll read it off for you. It's uh, MF Co. Miller's Falls, yeah. taken February 19, 1884. And it's, if you get a photo of it, you can read it quite easily. Now there's a picture. Oh no, hang on. Yeah, they're all say Miller's Falls. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know which one came first, with you know, or whether there was various iterations of it. But clearly, there's, uh, there's been some sort of inverted commas development over that period of what is it, 16, 26 years that it was in operation. Uh, I, I have something to add to that whole topic there, Jeffrey. When when we're when you're ready, yeah. Would well, you want to go ahead? I think I think the um. You, well, you're I right. didn't. So I thought maybe taking, somebody else was in line before my question. So taking uh, the look at that. See, I can. Oh that wow. was nice. That's a nice, nice stand. So, but that is just the patent date. Ah, uh, without Miller's Falls. Without Miller's Falls, yeah. yeah. Chester, you're up next anyway for the question. So uh, if you want to ask your question now, Chester. Okay, mine, uh, mine is, is more of a statement than a question. In the 1894 Miller's Fall catalog, they show, um, uh, they show this uh, number one spoke shave with the four holes in 1894. Oh. In the catalog, which is the 1915 catalog, it changes to the two hole only. So uh, between so, those two, those years- So four uh, is earlier. The four that's hole is earlier. And- That's interesting. On mine, the four hole, the opposite side was not flat beveled like yours is, yeah. but it's just round. And the reason for that is to get into a tighter curve. So the blade goes up to the actual body of the cigar shape and gives you a shaving that you can go into a three quarter inch or one inch hole and just turn it 
and shave the inside of a hole where you can't do it with the flat. Yeah. Right. Dang it, Chester. That's the now distinct. I gotta find an unmodified early one. Four hole. Like this one. And we were all thinking that if you had one of these, that you had the ultimate. And now we've got the ultimate of one of six <laughs> variations. And now we're gonna have to go and look for those other ones. Thanks very much for that, Chester. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but like I say, the four hole is the earlier. And, that, and that would be interesting to look on your study and see yeah. um, no. what patent dates are on those pieces themselves. But and they also, in the earlier catalog, I'll show you, see if I can show you this picture. You may have to spotlight this. Um, but you, you'll see, this is the earlier catalog. And I can't see myself, so let's see. All right. Um, let me get where it is. So yeah, this finger, OK? Now, you see the separation there? See mm -hmm. how they're showing an opening? In order to unscrew that, they're, they're giving an example of how it unscrews. Yeah. Um, the bead on the wood almost looks like it has a piece of metal and it, so it's metal to metal. So I'm wondering if you're actually separating it at the right point when you're pulling off the handle and that there isn't a fine line you're missing. I don't know. Uh -huh. on the patent. That's what it shows on the patent, the fine line. That there's metal on this side and metal on this side? Well, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a push me pull you. It's the same. It's the same. I see what you're trying. My well, mine doesn't then, undo on both sides. That shows two handles and actually says undoes both sides to get into cramped spaces. Exactly. Now but the, mine the, mine only undoes on one side. Now That's on the right. newer catalog, it no longer shows that. Now the wood goes all the way up to the metal there, and it only has the single bead. If you can see on mine, there is a line right there in the metal. Yeah, I don't have a line in my metal. Um, I'm not missing a line. So yeah, here. Uh, yeah, that, that I, that's not on the one I've got. I don't know if you can see right, that. And that's, and that's further, that's on the two hole, correct, Ethan? Right. Yeah, right there. No, that it, line. no this, is, this is a one hole. Or okay. two hole, not four hole. Yeah, I see that line. I can see that yeah. tiny line. And I'm wondering if you unscrewed it from there, um, would you not actually take the screw out of at the, right the rod? Place. Exactly. And instead of leaving the long rod that's in the wood, yeah. you would then it's good have the short one, which is what exact, it should do. Exactly. Yeah, I, reckon that's, I reckon that's actually corroded into there. Yeah, it's not coming out. No, I think you, you're going to have to put that in a chuck. I have to soak it. Yep. Yeah. But uh, I hope that helps, Ethan. That's, no, that's a thank you very much. That is very helpful right there. And yeah, that makes a lot more sense. That it they does. Would do I thought it was very way. strange that because, and I think one of mine is jammed on this side. I think yeah. one, mine has got the same sort of um, age corrosion in that side because I think yeah. they're both supposed to come. Chester, on your later one, on the later catalog, does it still say both handles or, or the handle? Um, no, should we ball? I'll have to find that page again. I think you only need cramped spaces on one side. <laughs> well, well no, you, because you, you change your direction, you can you want it on yeah. both sides because <laughs> oh, this yeah, the direction of shaving yeah. would actually change. I'm this gonna one has none of the, the markings on the metal tube, and I can unscrew both handles. I'm going to cut myself to oblivion here because yeah. this is as sharp as shit. Grab I'm, it tight. Yeah. <laughs> shit. Actually, shit's not very sharp. There we go. This one is. So this okay. one has, has none of those fine lines on the metal. It's just a plain tube. Yeah. And yeah. Both, that's, both the, that's exactly the same. Exactly the same as mine. Probably because they had problems with the, the two metal pieces corroding together and not. And John, you don't have any metal, it's not a metal face on your handle, right? No, it's just just no, the, anything else. Yeah, there's no metal just, face on just this. Just the rod. Yeah. yeah. In the um on the 1915 catalog, it refers to the wood as a rare tropical wood handles, as opposed it's to Coco Bolo. It, it's Coco Bolo. It's, oh. 
Yeah, the original, and the original one. Either handle, and it still does say either handle removable for working in cramped quarters, like Shrenick's little workshop. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 what it says verbatim. I don't know how they yeah, knew about Shrenick's workshop. Yes, but boy. In, the, in the patent, <laughs> the early versions of the spoke shaves, the handles are made of cocoa bolo, and either side can be detached for working situations. In Figure Five, you see the red portion of the throat. So some of them had red, some of them didn't. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, that was the, but the very early versions of Coco Bolo. This um, one here is, um, this is um, a TB Rail, a TB Rails catalog. Yeah. And they've got that down at Rosewood. And what company yeah, well, are Coco they Bolo is, is Rosewood. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. But at, uh, by by catalog number forty-two, um, they no longer sell s spoke shapes. Yeah, they're gone, and that's uh, um, that's interesting that it went away. I guess there were no more cramped quarters to work in. So let's um, let's let some other people um, ask some questions. Um, we've got yep. uh, Richard Hughes um, up next. Okay. Um, all right. I, th I think I'm, I think I'm maybe out of turn. I think Sean is listed before me. Is he? I, I was going to let some other people talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead then. Yeah. Um, well, my my question is uh, it's probably been been sort of answered already by yourself, Ethan and, and Jim. But uh, in the UK, these these things are, are quite rare. I've never I've never seen one in uh, in in reality. Um, and um, was kind of attracted by the idea of uh, of, of, of making one or, or making something similar. And I, I was I wanted to, to to ask if you were aware of any individual tool makers who'd uh, who succeeded in making such things. Um, well, Kelly Toolworks, I think, was was probably um, a small shop that. Uh, you know, he just made a. I, he had a very um, small selection of of tools and I believe it was mostly spoke shaves, different kinds of spoke shaves. Um, <clears throat> so certainly uh, he's, he's done that. Um, and then I would say uh, St. James Bay uh, Tool Company also has done that. And I know they're a pretty small operation too, just a couple guys. Yeah. So um, certainly possible. Um, yeah. And like Jim said, you know, it's just, um, it's just a, a piece of, uh, tool steel that, that has, uh, you know, it's two threaded holes on the, uh, on the outside and uh, um, two sections of, of, of steel removed from here and here. And the hard part then would be making the blade. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I, I, I kind of like a challenge, so, so maybe I'll leave it together. <laughs> if, if anybody's going to make one, it's you, Richard. That's, the, <laughs> that's 100%. I'm so yeah. thrilled. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, that was my question. Thank you. Oh, for sure. Um, Jeremy, over to you. All right, Ethan. Uh, first of all, good talk. Uh, although I was in and out because of the uh, weather moving to the Midwest right now, uh, we uh, I've lost power and internet, but I'm on a second back back backup device. Um, so my question and or, or a couple a couple thoughts. One is the difference between your um, your handle attachments. To me, mm -hmm. from an engineering perspective. The, the one with the met threaded rod in the handle seems like a least a less expensive version to manufacture. Um, a, because you can chuck the handle up and, and lathe it from right from that post, as well as obviously you have a shorter length of, of rod for the main body since it's fully machined. Um, that would be my supposition from that. Uh, but the real thing I wanted to talk about was, um, was uh, I have another maker that I don't, I didn't hear you talk about uh, it. This is um, CT Co, which I believe from my research was uh, a, a Cincinnati tool company. Yep. Um, I picked this up. I don't know if you've, have you come across this one before? I've seen it before. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, but I picked this one up at uh, uh, Handworks and, and um, a couple of, couple times ago and uh, Patrick Leach had like a bucket full of these. So, um, and this could very well be, 
the reason why people have a, a problem with the cigar shaves because um, this one is not to the same level as your Miller's Falls. Um, yeah. I can assure that. In fact, I did not realize that the handles were removable until you were <laughs> showing that your handles were removable. So I started pulling and twisting on this one and I found that this one comes out as a casting. Um, I mean, it's all one, but it's a casting, not a pulling machine part. Um, and that probably leads to why some of the problems. Uh, most notably when I was setting it up, there are these two adjustment grub screws back here that uh, <laughs> yeah. twist and shape the bed as well as uh, this uh, a hold down, whatever you want to call that lever gap, whatever you want to call that thing. That also provides the kind of the tension, uh, a really good spot for uh, chips to get in under unless you treat uh, that correctly yeah. and shape it just correctly. So is uh, the blade curved on that? It is curved. It, 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 well, I don't know if you can see that there, but yeah, the blade does curve. It starts out here and then it goes out there. So it is wow. a, like a cigar shave, not just yeah. a round bottom shave, but uh, yeah. this thing was a bear to get set up. In fact, I'm afraid to take it apart because, <laughs> and I hardly ever use it. Um, and mostly because any of my tight curves I've switched to, um, well, A, this is just not reliable, uh, but also the, uh, I have the little Caleb James ah, round shave, yeah. which is very, very good at uh, internal curves. Um, I haven't compared it because I really don't have a gold standard on the cigar shave to, to do, but I, I think I would like to try the Miller's Falls version that looks like a much more refined version um, um, of this. And, or I assume this is a knockoff. There are a later knockoff of that. Uh, this looks like, I don't know, like early 20th century. So one thing that I do anytime I get a new tool in my shop, um, and you know, I do it whether it's a, um, so I'll brag, whether it's a fantastic tool like um, like my uh, Sauer and, and Steiner um, smoothing plane, or if it's just uh, something that I pick up that I need to uh, refurbish, um, once I get it assembled and get it working, then I immediately take it all apart again and redo it. And I'll do that about five or six times at least until I'm comfortable with um, you know, with doing that. So, and I didn't do that when I first got this, uh, <laughs> this one. Um, and so, uh, you know, I got it set up and I was like, okay, don't touch it, you know, use it, but don't touch the setting on it. Um, and then uh, once I, I figured out the idea, the technique or the, the methodology of uh, assemble and reassemble and, and reassemble until you understand the tool much more fully, um, so now, you know, I, I'm totally comfortable with with taking any one of these apart and um, getting it put back together properly. And um, I think that's it looks like those do. do not have any. It looks like those don't have any real adjustment, right? I mean, the the body is machined like yes, a uh, single feature. Correct. So I guess it's kind of like uh, an infill plane where you have like no adjustment on them on the throat or anything. It's all baked in, but it's like yeah. very well done. Whereas like a Bailey plane where you got to kind of fiddle with the, make sure the, the frog set correctly and could not have a chip in between there or something like that. It could be sure. causing some chatter. Um, um, but I think getting I the, the difference with that into the other one. Getting the blade set up is still takes some, some, some work. And, um, mm. you know, cause also you're <laughs> dealing with, you're dealing with two screws here. And so, uh, well, in fact, on mine, I don't know if you can see that one of those is a little bit higher than the other. So I probably need to adjust that a little bit, but you can, um, you know, you can you can kind of shift the blade to the left or the right a little bit, uh, depending on how you mm -hmm. tighten these and and loosen them up. You can even put a little bit of a of a cant, C A N T, like, on um, the blade so you end up yeah yeah I, <laughs> so that you end up like like mine is <laughs> where um, it's I can do a heavier shaving on one side and a lighter shaving on the other side. So there's some some good adjustability on that. Uh, now you, I just keep looking at these around, and now I just want to get that that handle removed at the seam. Be careful; it may not actually yeah, remove. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, just so you know, your spoke shave is from around 1923. Later, okay, um, and it's a Hargrave made by Cincinnati Tool Company. Um, so the, the Miller's Falls is an earlier version. That's what I suspected. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Um, right. So back back to the questions then. So we've got um, Sean. Did you want to ask another question, or have you have you asked it already? 
I've mostly covered it, but I'll just say a quick thank you because while I have this, I haven't really used it very much because mine came working on arrival and I've been too scared to sharpen them because of everything I've heard. Yeah. And the other thing I want to say thank you to is, uh, this is a little sample of Ethan's work. I have this beautiful little oiler. <laughs> uh, think, of, think of mini Paul Sellers uh, rag yeah. and pan, only this is a tartan in a stick. Um, and it's fantastic. When I first got it, I was like, I don't think I'm going to like it. I think it's too small. Um, but in actual fact, that's the beauty of it. It just sits in my tool well. And anytime I want to put a little comedian oil on something, yeah. it's just a grab away. I've always loved it. Thank you very much, Ethan. It was a great oh, You're welcome. That's my, that is my, so <laughs> when you start getting into tools and you do research and you, you figure about, you know, you're researching the types of different tools, when you start making something, then you type your own tools. Uh, so that's my type two. <laughs> <laughs> um this is <laughs> this is my type one um and this is a, a boxwood that um lee valley had these for sale uh for a really good price and but i guess the seller is this small company in france and they will not sell anything less than like i don't know ten thousand or something like that is, is their minimum order and still lee valley was like screw that we're not going to buy anymore and i was like no because i need these um so i can't get them anymore uh and i can't get the company in france to even return an email or a phone call um so this is type one uh you showed type two But I'm working on type three. We have it in a nice um, walnut. Well, stand there. Nice. But that's not the. What's the one that I want to show you? Is, this, is it this one? Nope. Oh, hi. So there we're getting. Now I'm getting fancy. And I'm doing some some metal inlay on the inside or on the end, um, and then here this is cherry, but look at that we're getting we're getting very fancy. We're getting very fancy here. So um, this is just me trying to figure out a new way to do this because um, because the idiots in France are those rolled won't... threads or are those like 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 a like a light bulb thread or is that those are cut like a sharp thread. They, uh, I cut them. I have, uh, I have okay. a, a pipe vise, and um, and one of these, uh, and I cut them all on uh, a variety of things. Actually, I cut them on uh, copper pipe. I cut them on aluminum pipe. I cut them on. Um, it's electrical piping, but it's actually like a, it's a, like a fiber, it's a, like a hard, like a MDF kind of thing, but harder even. Um, and there's a couple different varieties of that. Um, and that's actually what this is on the walnut one here, um, is that it's electrical um, pipe. Oh, I thought that was wood at first glance. <laughs> yeah, it is wood. Like it is wood. It's wood and glue. Um, but or else it's fiber glass. It's fiber glass. That's what it is. Sorry. <laughs> Not wooden glue. So anyway, this is type three, and that's what I'm working on. Uh, if I can stop uh, saying yes to so many other things <laughs> that I'm working on, and I can sit down and, and actually get those going, um, that's what I would like to do, because uh, I really enjoyed making those oilers, and so I want to get back to it. Yeah. <laughs> I will thank you very much in that case. Oh, sure, sure. Now, I, now I'll have I to appreciate the kind words. It's not one Brilliant. We've we got, we got two questions left then. We've got one from Andy and then we've got one from Hank. And, and then that's the, we'll call it a, a bench talk for this then. So, uh, Andy, Andy Brown, do you want, want to ask yours? There you go, unmuted. Cheers, Ethan. Thanks a lot for the talk. That's, oh, sure, uh, Andy. Really nice. Uh, yeah, going back to um, your your heavily uh, work, reworked one, mm -hmm. where you've got um, the, the double bevel 
and then you've got the single bevel on the on the radius. So if you just hold yours up a bit close to the camera, so that's your that's your really wide mouth, yeah. Yeah. So when you revolve revolve it round, no, is this, this the one? one? Nope. This oh, is no, not. no, it's not. Which is the other one with the two scrolls then? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Mm, here. That's it. Yeah. So when you take it round, you see you've got that flat bevel there. Yeah. Does that bevel go right to the edge of the radius of the of the body? Yeah. So you've got the radius of the body, and then the bevel goes to a further edge, right up onto the onto the radius. Mm -hmm. is, is, so is that exactly the same height as the radius? Not ground down below the radius, the out, the outer circumference. Because I'm thinking that what you've got there is the original and then on the back which should be round yeah somebody ground because, that, because that's where you use it when you're taking a a, 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 a more radius shave mm -hmm. that it should actually not be ground away right so the guy who mullered it didn't muller it that much because it was the same he's kept the original and taken it off the other side so I think the difference on this one is uh, there's the original. Yes, speak again. Um, there's the original. Um, and if you look at the other one here, uh, that's the one he added. And this is only an eighth of an inch where that is a quarter of an inch. And so what you end up with is a wider mouth. Um, so it actually is for doing um, a thicker shaving than a thinner shaving. Yeah, yeah. Oh, inside there, there's. I've got two different sizes of flat. When when you go inside, there's um, those two flats there mm -hmm. are actually different sizes. I didn't know yeah. whether you were actually different. One's um, just under half an inch, a sixteenth. Uh, it's, uh, Seven sixteenth, and the other one is uh, closer to three eight. And I didn't know whether that would indicate which was the right way around. Hmm. Well, um, on the on the later ones, uh, I think it has to be the. And there's only really one way to set it up. Uh, because you can't reverse the blade on the later ones. Uh, it's not. Yeah. There's not yeah. enough blade on it to do that. It, it'd be interesting to see if they change the body shape. Yeah. Along with losing the holes. Or or did did the holes come afterwards for a while? I think the holes are first. No. Yeah. Or the holes came and then they dropped them again. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, no, I, I was just thinking that 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 radius there, where there's no, where it's not ground away at all, could be could work. Mm -hmm. Where you're saying you grind, you, you hone the inside, yeah, the inside edge of the cutter. Yeah, um, I'm just looking at this one's been honed as well, a little bit, but. Um, I think you have to do it just a tiny bit, just to to yeah. get a you know to get the perfect a good edge. I mean, the other thing as well is is getting this angle, yeah, to the radius. Oh, so I've blocked it with my finger now. So getting that that flat, either there, sorry, or let's get some straight. So that's that's how it is at the minute. Yeah. I mean, on the Miller's Falls and that um, Kelly you've just showed, it sits quite back like that. So it's, it gives a lot longer grind as such. Um, Andy, you're talking about grinding it on the outside, and he's yeah. suggesting that it should not be ground on the outside, only on the inside. Um, 
No, you can't. You can't grind on the inside. That's where you sharpen it. Is on the inside, not on the outside. But that's just a honing. Well, I think what Andy's saying is that that flat, which is the face or the back of an, uh, look at it as a plain iron. That flat is ground flat, and on my one, it's really wide. And yeah. Yours is much narrower, and I think it's ground back at an angle that's slightly. But it, that angle doesn't matter because you just rotate it a bit more so that it's flat with the with the salt. Yeah. I mean, when or you look on, patent, of assault. on, on the patent drawing, um, th that that flat, when it's set up, is actually completely flat to the the flat that's on the yeah that's set in there. Right. Um, now, when I put mine round to that flat, mine won't actually pass a shaving below it. You have to back it. You have to back it off to open the mouth, don't you? So, but yeah, but but my my, I've got that tiny tiny line across the top there that that doesn't show on the patent drawing. On the patent drawing, it shows that that grind is below the radius. Sorry, the circumference of right. the body. Mm -hmm. but th this one's not. This one's actually part of the circumference of the body. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, oh, I see, yeah. I see what you're saying now. So this has not been altered at all. And do you think that's, that grind there is what effectively is a wear on a plane? Not, not the wear, but a wear. You know, you know, when you have the front mouth, you have the wear, right? Which the, black, where the shaving runs up. And, and if you grind a, 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 a tiny bevel on that, effectively it becomes a way. If you just imagine the whole thing is flat instead of circular, it makes a lot more sense. I think mm -hmm. that's the point. So if you take that as the sole, which you're pointing towards the camera now, that tiny bevel that you've got there is effectively a wear in the throat. So therefore, when you bring the iron up to it, you're bringing the face of the iron up to it with the bevel above so it's a bevel down plane yeah and the the actual micro bevel on the inside of the cutter becomes the bevel up iron does that make sense and so therefore you're coming you're cut it to pretend it's a mitre plane so you're bringing it round and the flat edge is the face of an iron that's in the mitre plane and it's coming round and it's approaching the mouth. And that gap that you've got there with the bevel on the body, not the main bevel, the little bevel, is effectively the mouth inside. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you yeah. describe it like that. So you've got to no. flat, basically take the whole cylinder and flatten it out, including the iron. And then it makes sense. And, and again, that's the way you sharpen it because you yeah. sharpen the face. And I, you know, I don't know, Ethan. I wouldn't put any. I mean, I've not put any back bevel on that that face at all. No, uh, I wouldn't put any bevel on on the face. No, no, not at all. So, so it's just a micro bevel on the inner side of that yeah. cylinder, yeah. and that yeah. effectively becomes a bevel up iron in yeah. what is effectively a mitre plane, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 I would agree. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm I'm just intrigued that that my grind, that flat grind, isn't mm -hmm. shown on the patent drawing. The the patent drawing specifically shows it dipping under. Yeah, but um, I mean maybe they just didn't grind yours enough. Well, well I'm thinking this could be why some people have so much trouble with it. Maybe it was a, a poor. I'm just going to pick you up and. Um, but with yours, Andy, you, the temptation is to rotate the iron or the cutter around so that it appears at the back of that sole, right? Yeah, you see, it is, it is sticking proud. Yeah. It is sticking proud. Yeah. And correct, isn't huh? figure two in the patent drawing, isn't figure two showing what you're showing us right now, Andy? Figure two? Yeah, there you go. Figure uh, two, two shows a different grind on one side and and less less width 
now compare figure two to figure one. You see, there's the, your, your round grind. And then if you go up, you see that's a larger and deeper yeah. grind. Yeah, you've turned it. That blade's been turned round. No, and he's no, no, well, that's, no, that's not. That's, oh, that's, the, that's the back of the blade. And the, yeah. the that's throat. the back of the blade, but you see the uh, the uh, inset uh, bevel on the tube. Oh, I see. Yeah, wider. yeah. No, I agree. I understand now. Sorry, I thought that was a face. That right. where the C is, right? I thought that was a face. No, it's not. No, it's right. no below the and, C, and, the X, and the lines down below the C on that block, which is marked X, right. that is re that is red, and is the, the throat, yeah, and is the throat the, of the mouth. It's yeah. the throat right. of the mouth. And then if you go down to Figure Two, you'll see that 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 flat portion is smaller. Go, go. Yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. It is. You see. But go to figure four, where you've got a cross-sectional, and you'll see that the iron comes round and is proud of where they're showing the sole plate. So it's yes. further out of the radius. Yeah. And so X is your sole, and Z, or Z, if you happen to be a rebel, um, is, the pot, is the edge of the cutter. And therefore, you see down from Z, you see it's completely flat and there's a micro bevel where the Z is pointing. There, yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing on the back of that uh, cutter. That cutter is no. just the end. It's like the yeah. back end of an iron. And this there's is the, it's, it's like the face of an iron. Yeah, and there's nothing on the throat where next to, to the left of the X yeah, uh, there's the X on the right hand side above the four. It's X1 and, X, and just X. Yeah, X, sorry. So X1 is the bed, X1 yeah. is the sole. Uh, and then you can see, if you look at the top of the X1, you can see a tiny, tiny little indent when it goes across horizontally. And that shows a tiny little wear. So you've got, if you imagine that as being a plain mouth, you've got the edge, the sole. And the wear, all three of them, mm. which allows the shaving to curl up round the cutter and then out of the throat where yep. X is. Yeah. And, and that's Alfie, that's Alfie the agrees. Bit, the bit where my cursor is there now. Yeah, that's the wear. The bit, <laughs> the, 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 that, that flat dips under, and on mine, it doesn't dip under, it stays at the same circumference. So it meets the edge of the cutter. Yeah. Before it actually is now, without putting that micro bevel on the inside edge there, like Ethan's talking about, I yeah, won't you get wouldn't have any opening. I think you need to do that. Yeah, you will need to have a micro bevel there because that is effectively the cutting edge. Otherwise, you don't have a primary bevel. The whole of the inside of the cutter is a primary bevel, if you like. But mm -hmm. it, like on any iron that's bevel up, the primary bevel shows a uh, 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 presents no cutting surface at all. It's just when you hone the edge of the primary bevel that you get the cutting edge where it meets the face or the back if you're American. Mm. And, and that's where the point of Z is. There. I call it the face. Yeah. Oh, you've got well done. Thank you. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, I've read the, um, the actual accompaniment to this and at no point does he mention having to put that uh, micro bevel on. Um, which... I think it's assumed. I mean, where where do you when you buy a mitre plane? Does it say you need to put a bevel on it? It doesn't say. You know, it's you just do it because that's what mm. you know. It's. I, I definitely think it's needed because otherwise, that inner of the tube. If you think of the cutter as a tube, the inner surface is rough as the casting, isn't it? It has no cutting edge at all, and you need two cutting edges of of um, flat that meet in a in a point of infinite infinity nothing yeah if you look also at figure one at the inset of the handle you'll see also that um that what we were saying is that the double-ended uh, rod mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't be unscrewing the wood from the rod but the internal piece yeah, yeah, yeah but it also shows it a lot longer uh, uh, sorry it shows it a lot shorter than ethan's yeah. very very long one which would go deeper into the handle wouldn't it? that's why he wears a kilt oh, of course yeah well that 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 makes sense because 
if you're trying to unscrew that handle from there every time and you've only got that short amount of thread it's going to it, well the wood's going to give easier than the, yeah. the tightness of the metal yeah yeah, so yeah. You've, they've extended the, the the thread further up the handle to obviously try and give some resistance because Especially when you if take, it's go on when you take the threaded portion up of the rod you end the thread stops and then yeah. those threads sorry the, the the part that's not threaded um becomes a compression fit across the top of, the, of all the threads that have gone before it if, not only that it'll rust at point a1 yeah. and that's why that's stuck and that's why mine's stuck which is not going to be by tomorrow i can assure you <coughs> But yeah, anyway, I'll, my point nice. was the, um, if anybody else has got um, the, the the same thing, where where mm. I've got no no step between the outer circumference. Oh, and the, a gap, a gap yeah, you're yeah. talking about. Oh, yeah. right. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I've got a gap. Yeah, it's that X one from the circumference. There's a tiny little gap. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't see what you meant. Yeah, that's. Do you put a marker above a look where Z is then, uh, Jim? What I do with mine, I don't know if Ethan does the same. Is I take the whole thing, get a get a. I've got a, a Shapton stone, and I just put the whole thing that way down. So the 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 bevel inside face down on it, tilt it slightly, and just run it backwards and forwards, sliding it on yep. the bench. So you're actually holding it at an angle on the Shapton, but you're moving the whole tube up and down the bench. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're just basically honing a micro bevel. And, and as Ethan says, it, it ain't, it ain't, we're not talking an inch, you know, you're only talking about Never a couple of, <laughs> I know, it's a couple of microns, you know, so you're only honing the inside of the cutter where the face is already honed. Lovely. What, one last question. Um, Hank has been hanging on for quite a while. So, Hank, over to you. I'll, I'll attempt to be quick, knowing that it's almost tomorrow for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I did post a worth point thing to the Kelly version. Yeah. Um, that's in the chat. Um, Ethan, did you ever compare these to the Stanley 67s? It was quite different. Uh, no. Okay. Um, the 67s. Yeah, it's it's different because I think that's a flat blade. Yeah, it is. Cigar shave. Yeah. So, um, and I was curious on your damaged version. Do you think that that's repairable or usable, or is it just shot because they ruined that? I mean, it's completely usable as a as a, a wider mouth um, okay. version. I mean, that's where I was. You know, I was using that one to get these. Okay. That was you know, that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so where there... I don't have mine yet. And if you guys snipe me on eBay, I'm going to shoot you all. Um, <laughs> where where are you riding the bevel? Are you riding the flat on the on the blade, or are you riding on the barrel? Of the, okay, on there. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. And so that angle of approach to the wood doesn't necessarily change because it's from that point on the barrel of the tool to the thickness setting of the blade to that gap that you're getting that thickness you can't really change the thickness of the of the shaving so to speak significantly um i think you can okay. uh, you can if you just by by rolling the the blade back okay from the opening, you can create a wider opening. Okay. Um, but the problem is, is if you go back too far, you'll get chatter. Yeah. Um, so, you know, so there's tight, you yeah. can roll it back and, okay. and open it up a bit. Um, but like I said, if you go too far, it'll be ugly. Cool. Well, thanks. This was really very enlightening. <laughs> Lovely. Well, 67 serves a similar quick, purpose, Jeffrey. but it's got a larger diameter, so it can't get into the spaces <laughs> that the cigar gets into. Brilliant, brilliant. Can I, mean, I just can I just quickly say, Jeffrey, before I go? <laughs> there you go. Now, 
that somebody owes me a favor because somebody should have said the other handle is left hand thread. So I've been tightening up for the last five years. <laughs> you didn't ask. Oh, thanks very much, mate. No, I appreciate Jeez, Jim, that. We thought you knew that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and uh, so on that note, I would like to say thank you very much to Ethan, uh, the, the kilted uh, woodworker, for, for entertaining us for, for the best part of, um, well, actually, for some of us, three hours, um, because uh, right. the, American, the Americans were here uh, uh, an early. Hour early because of their spring forward. Um, but Ethan, thank you very, very much. And if I could ask everybody to unmute themselves and to, to raise their bench beverages and to, uh, to toast uh, Ethan and the bench. Ethan and the bench. Ethan and the bench. Well done. Well, done. well, thank you guys for having me. I sure enjoyed it and I appreciate it. It's a high tech conversation on the low tech topic. Live on the World Wide Web via Zoom. Bench Talk 101.